Hey guys, it's Kayler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, this is part 2.5 of our Design to Code series for our Design Monthly website. It's a website design that supplies users with monthly asset files. We've designed and coded it now, and now we're going to make it responsive. So in this quick video, I'm going to show you guys the code needed to add all the breakpoints and make this seamless on all devices. You guys should have everything you need if you downloaded the project file last time and if you followed along. So let's go ahead and get started. To make this responsive go a little bit quicker, one thing I want you guys to change is in the header right here where the background size is. Let's change this from contain to cover. That made things just a little bit simpler. So once you've done that, we can go down here to the responsive tag we made in the last video and go ahead and start with our first breakpoint. So I've managed to get everything looking pretty good using two breakpoints. So the first one we're going to be doing is at 1000 pixels. So I'm going to say at media only screen and and then in parentheses we need max dash width and then we're going to set that to 1000 pixels and then we can open and close those curly brackets. So everything inside of here is going to overwrite up here when we are below 1000 pixels. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look at the header. So if we go up to the header, we can just copy and paste all of this info down inside of this. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is increasing the height so that we can fit this image when we scale down. So let's get to around 1000 pixels. A trick I like to do is I go into the body tag and I set the background color so something just really easy like red so we know when this breaks so right here is when we're gonna start adjusting so everything looks okay until right there you'll see the text starts overlaying so we're gonna stop right here and we're gonna adjust this to 1600 and then 1600 here we don't need to adjust any of the padding we're gonna keep that same spacing so now we need to switch over to the mobile version of the header image so all we need to do is type out mobile underscore background underscore header dot PNG. We're going to switch this one back to contain and then the bottom right alignment works fine. So what we've done is we've switched the image up. So instead of coming from this corner, it's now coming from down here so that we can push it below this text a little bit. Since we know where our break point is, I'm going to go ahead and remove this background color. The next thing we're going to target is this H1. So header H1. And I'm just going to set the width on this to 100%. So that gives room for this to be spaced out, which looks nice. So if we scroll down to the team section, it looks okay, but with some adjustments, we can make this look a little bit better. So let's target the dot team class first. And let's go up here at the top and grab all of our styling for that section. And then paste that down here. So we don't need the text align center. We can remove that because that stays the same. And we don't need the padding, of course. And then the repeat tag, we can take that out as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is adjust the margin. I'm going to remove the 10 on the top and set that to 3. And the background needs to be mobile. So we'll add that on there. So mobile background underscore team. And then the background position, I'm going to set to top. Then we can also adjust the width of this H1. So we'll say dot team H1. And we're going to adjust that to 100%. So that's what we're left with. Now on to the about section. So dot about. And we'll grab that bit of CSS. And then paste that in. Padding is going to stay the same. The background is going to change to a mobile. So mobile underscore background underscore about dot PNG. No repeat, we can take that out, or you can leave it, doesn't really matter. And then left center is going to stay the same. The background size is going to switch over from a percentage to contain. Just in case, I'm going to set the overflow on the Y to visible. And I think that's all we need for that image, that looks pretty good. Next thing we can do is target the about H1, so dot about H1. Padding on the top. And I'm going to set this to 900 pixels. And this is to push that text down from this image. So this image is now going to be on top of this. So if we were using this as an actual element and we we're using flex, this would be very easy. But since we're using it as a background image, 
uh, we're going to have to do a little bit of adjusting to kind of compensate for that. So this is what we're going to have to do is just push that down. Next, I need to target the about H1 and the dot icons class. And we're going to set a margin to the left of zero, which is going to cancel out that margin that's pushing it over here on the side. So that's going to fill up the screen nicely. And that's all we need for that section. Next here is our sign up. And we called that the call to action class. So I'll say dot call to action. And instead of just copying it over, we'll just type it in. So margin on the top, we're going to change to 25 EM to push that down from this. I'm also going to adjust the padding values to 15 EM on the top, 5% on the right, 15 EM on the bottom, and 5% on the left. And then we can set the background size to make that match a little bit better. And we'll set that to 70%. And it hasn't broken yet, but it will break eventually. This button is going to slide underneath this. So what we can do is instead of having to add a breakpoint just for that, we can just apply it here. So I'm going to say dot call to action H1 and then comma dot call to action A to target that button. And then we can just set a margin on the bottom of 30 pixels. And that barely changes the look of anything. But when this breaks, it's going to make sure there's some spacing here. And we're applying it to both so they stay centered up like this. The next thing we need to do is target the footer. So footer. And we're going to text align this to the center. And then that's all we need for that. And we can say dot footer pages and we're going to change the visibility to hidden and then we also need to change the display so we can actually center this up to the page so footer p comma dot footer pages and we'll change both those to display of block and i believe they were in line block so now that they're block you'll see that that switches over here so I believe that is everything we need to make this look good on tablet. Yep. Okay, so now we can move on to the next breakpoint. So to save ourselves some time, I'm just going to copy this line here, this at media. And I'll go outside of this one and just paste it in and then open and close the brackets. And this last breakpoint is going to be at 600 pixels. So we'll change that to 600 pixels. And so we can see when that breaks, we'll do the same thing we did up above background color change that to red so now at 600 pixels our background is going to change right there so it's around this area here and everything looks decent uh, but there are some things that could be improved especially when it gets down into this area here we have a lot of spacing in certain spots especially up here. So we can remove that body. Now we know where it breaks. And we just need to adjust the header. So we'll change that. And I'm gonna set the height here to 1300 pixels. And then the min height to 1300 pixels. Then we can change the header H1. And the only thing we need to adjust here is the margin. And we're gonna set one EM on the top of that instead of I think it had three EM. So now it's closer to the navigation and then zero for the rest of the value. So it just is applied to the top. And the last thing we need is the dot about H1. We're gonna set a padding on the top of that to 800 pixels. So let's quickly scroll through that and see what we have. Okay, so one thing we do need to change is this. So this is in a div called members. So we can say dot members. And that is displayed as flex, so we can say flex direction and set that to a column instead of a row. Then we need some spacing. So each one of those is in a class of dot person. So we can set a margin on the top to 30 pixels. And with that, we should have everything done for this website. So let's take a look at it. So here we start out on desktop. And then we can scale this down 
and around here it's going to break. You'll see the image changes, some adjustments are made to make this look good on tablet. And then we scale down and you'll see the image about to jump back up. There is mobile all the way down to as small as we can make our browser get and everything is looking good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you guys did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more UI related content. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.